today. Okay, so carrying on from our lesson last week, we were looking at the key divisions in the early stages of the civil rights movement and the general impact across the board. Sam, come on. Sit up straight. Right, stop slouching. This is the perfect opportunity for you to engage, to make the most of it. Well, we learn the same stuff every year for Black History Month. Every single October, we learn the same things. Either apartheid, slavery, or the civil rights. How many of you guys have actually learned something new these last years? See? That's what I mean. Sam, this is our history. Come on, man. No, seriously. Do you guys know anything about Ralph Bunch? The first black person to win the Nobel Prize. Or that the richest person ever lived was a black man named King Luce in the first of Mali. What about Ella Baker? What about Ella Baker? Well, actually, I know who Ella Baker is. One of the most influential women of the civil rights movement. This is why I can't take Black History Month seriously, man. But Samuel, the curriculum is designed to help you think about Black History critically. Actually, miss, it's designed to teach us what's to think, not how to think. For example, when that light switched, you taught us it was Thomas Edison who made that happen. When ironically it was actually a darker man who made that light flick, Louis Latimer to be precise. Quite nice when you're talking about Mr. Hamilton and his racing car, but red light stop. We're always taught that Martin Luther King had a dream, man. But those dreams can't be achieved because our brains are in chains, our minds are in slaves, so we won't get our redemption, Morgan. Free, man. Will we ever be free, man? And leave this state of imprisonment? And take that walk of free, damn it, green man from a traffic light invented by the same man who made gas masks to protect our organs. Another free man named Garrett Morgan. But I bet you never knew that. We need to open our minds. But how can we be taught to see if the blind lead the blind? The first person to develop significant eye surgery was a black woman named Dr. Patricia E. Bath. Now on that note, there's a question I must ask. If this is a great opportunity to learn and be engaged about our past, why are we not actually being taught about our past? Transatlantic slavery where we're taught black history starts, but is it really? There seems to be a lot you haven't told us. And you shut down and hold back on the bold ones who stand against the way you're trying to mold us. Consistent enemies of progress. You're surprised because I know things you don't expect me to know yet. And when I tell you you're wrong for telling me about me, you call it a riot or I call it a protest. The Broadwater Farm Riots. The media exacerbate and make it seem like it's a bunch of delinquent youths on the streets. When really the first cause and trigger was death at the hands of the police. We cease to know information and the truth. And that's simply because you withhold information from the youth. Maybe. Maybe one day we'll be satisfied with how our knowledge of history equates. Well, I'm sure like me, you're waiting for the teacher to fill in that space. So do so then. Um, no answer. Well, maybe I can help and just throw out there some names. Mary Seacole, a Crimean war nurse. Mary Prince, a black female author. To be precise, she was the first. Bernie Grant, influential local activist and respected NP. Trevor McDonald, one of the first black ITN journalists to hit the TV screen. Jamal Edwards and SBTV. And when Fuse ODG brought the Yazonto dance to the UK, and my foot swayed to the left and to the right like the wipers of a car's windscreen, and DJ Abrante brought Afro beats to the streets. See, it's funny when we think of our childhood memories. A man who was actually funny, Lenny Henry. Many others, and the list continues. Okay, your people, so that's it, that's it, it's your boy Samuel King. This is my poem, What I Wasn't Taught in School. And you're watching Word on the Curve. Blah.